today we'll be talking about World War I and Great Britain's involvement. So some background about Great Britain. It's an island just north of the rest of Europe. Um, in 1901, Great Britain had a population of 41 million people. However, their entire empire, which includes colonies and territories, included 400 million people. Um, Queen Victoria was in power from 1837 to 1901. She was then replaced by Edward VII until 1910. And finally, King George V was king during World War I. So one of the major things that happened um, to all of Europe and Great Britain specifically during uh, the half century before World War I was African colonization, um, specifically called the Scramble for Africa, um, started in the 1870s and really saw Great Britain extending their international influence further than it already was. Um, they eventually, however, met African tribes who were very unwilling to be colonized um, due to the bad past that colonization had in Africa. Um, ultimately, this led to 1881, the first Boer War, in which the Boer tribes stood up and defeated the British troops. Um, and while this did not stop British interference, it was definitely eye-opening to the British government and British people, showing them that they were not all powerful and that they could eventually be defeated. And this kind of plays into British society as a whole during the time. Um, urban poverty was beginning to be recognized in the 1980s. This follows a trend of a lot of social problems were being recognized during the late 1800s. Um, and while they were looking for solutions, it ultimately left people worried about how they would adjust to a changing society. Um, they saw technology, um, economies, world trade, things like that were all changing and they were scared that they'd be left in the past even though Great Britain was um, extremely powerful at the time. The outcome of the First Boer War also left many in Britain distressed because they felt like they were losing power. Again, they're in Great Britain, they were used to always having power and controlling power. Um, and so this was one of the first times they realized they could lose that. And this feeling comes back up again right before World War I where they feel like they are losing power. Finally, um, some important legislation was the Third Reform Act of 1884. This extended the right to vote to agricultural workers. Ultimately, this legislation led to a shift in British government to prioritize communities and stray away from the idea of natural order religion. Natural order religion is what gave um, the monarchies, obviously they didn't abandon their monarchy, but um, they definitely shifted their priorities to communities, things like free public education, better access to medical care, things like that. So it was a big time for shifts in British society. Leading up to the war, Great Britain was a constitutional monarchy. Um, the king was King George V from 1910 to 1936. The head of government was the Prime Minister Herbert H. Esquith from 1908 to 1916, who was then um, replaced by Prime Minister Lloyd George from 1916 to 1922. Some important political parties during this time were the Liberal Party, Labour Party, Conservative Party, and House of Commons. An important capital was England of London, and there was a lot of division of power before 1914. So there was the King George, the House of Commons, the House of Lords, the Prime Minister, and the Foreign Secretary, along with the Chancellor of Exchequer. So Great Britain was a main ally who fought against the main central powers. Um, an example would be Great Britain was um, very powerful before this time. And then Germany was rising and there was a need for political reforms because before this, the only people who were allowed to vote were those who were wealthier and had a significant amount of land. So by the mid 1800s, only around one in seven British males were entitled to vote. So this obviously posed for a lot of issues in Great Britain at the time. And by 1914, Europe was divided into two rival alliance systems, the triple entity, which was um, Britain, France, and Russia. And then along with the Triple Entente, there was the Triple Alliance, which was Austria, Hungary, Germany, and Italy. And in 1893, Germany's power was growing in Europe. Therefore, Britain and France decided to join the alliance. So the Triple Alliance caused a threat. Okay, so moving on to foreign relations. First is Belgium. Great Britain and Belgium forced first officially formed an alliance over the Treaty of London in 1839. This was a guarantee of Belgian independence and neutrality from not only Great Britain, but also France, Russia, Germany. 
This was later broken by Germany, but we'll get into that. Uh, this caused Great Britain to become very protective of Belgium. A uh, prime example of this is the German invasion in Belgium in 1914. Germany was invading Belgium in order to get to France, another ally of Great Britain. This then caused Great Britain to go to war against Germany. And moving into France and Russia, these two countries, along with Great Britain, were known as an alliance called the Triple Entente, which was formed officially in 1907. Uh, both of these countries were signatories of the Treaty of London in 1839, which agreed upon the independence and neutrality of Belgium. They were all fearful of Germany and its growing power in Europe. Uh, Germany had declared war in France, and this was the cause of the Belgian invasion in order to get to France. And Britain was fearful that if France had lost a war against Germany, Germany would gain control of France and consequently all of Western Europe. And Britain was not about to let that happen. And Great Britain and Germany had experienced a lot of tension between the two in the recent years. Um, for example, Germany had pushed construction of a battle fleet in the 1890s. And immediately after, Great Britain responds with an unprecedented shipbuilding program in the Royal Navy. Um, the unification of Germany in 1871 led to the steady and exponentially increasing state of Germany. They were driven by nationalism. They sought to dominate continental Europe, and they were increasingly their power in the military, economically, in all aspects, basically. And this caused a fear of Germany by Great Britain, as Great Britain was used to being the superpower in the world. And this rising by Germany uh, gave off this feeling of being surpassed. And this caused Great Britain to take into account their self-preservation. And the breaking of Treaty of London by Germany by invading Belgium to get to France was kind of the last straw for Great Britain. And they just had to get involved in order to stop uh, Germany from surpassing them permanently. So getting into the economic state of Britain and Germany, so Britain's international economy, starting in the early 1900s, they started to form economic alliances, sign treaties, stuff like that. Before that, they had been very closed off to that sort of thing and tried to remain more national with their economy and with their political alliances. But the Industrial Revolution brought about some change to that. So one example of that was the Entente Cordiale with France, which was an agreement signed April 8th, 1904 by Britain and France to improve relations given their pretty violent history because they felt this move would propel their economies forward together. Um, during the early 1900s, late 1800s, um, Britain considered Germany to be the biggest threat to their economy because of their growth in almost all industries before World War I. So this graph shows the GDP of Britain and Germany and a couple other countries as well. Germany's in blue and um, the United Kingdom's in green. So you can see towards the end around 1906, Germany surpasses the United Kingdom very slightly. So although Britain was considered to be the center of the global trade in the early 1900s, Germany's economy was on the rise during that time. And it was first in coal, iron, chemicals, light engineering, and more, which was stopping Britain from being Europe's largest economy. Um, so considering the shipbuilding industry, Britain had the world's largest shipbuilding industry, so it surpassed Germany there, but, it was, but Germany was leading in everything else. Um, these things combined was the first like, major economic shift for Britain in the past few centuries, because Britain had been on top, especially in Europe for that time. So they viewed Brit Germany as like a main economic threat as, and their economy as one of their main priorities. So nationally, Britain adopted an income tax before the war as a means of funding it um, and to fund the government, which was a thing that was kind of new for the time. It was discussed as a possible plan with both France and Russia, but Britain was the only one who actually implemented it. So it was kind of a significant change in the timeline. Britain was also incredibly invested in their economic planning before the war because of the, pre the reasons previously mentioned. Um, they, it was, their economy was one of their main priorities and it was at the forefront of their concerns. The Committee of Imperial Defense, AKA the CID, was approved in 1912 with Germany's power increasing, and it was basically just a committee dedicated to using economic warfare against other countries. But directly before the war, um, Britain gutted this 
um, committee and didn't use it and replaced it with a blockade um, plan instead because they were scared of potential relation of potential reactions by neutral countries before the war. So that's Great Britain before World War One.